Most people don't realize that our role as search and rescuers is 100% volunteer. That means we don't get paid for the time spent practicing or on rescue missions. I have a five-year-old son at home, and so as soon as a call comes in, I need to make sure that he, you know, I can hand him off to my husband. And that's when I start getting all my gear ready. I go through a list, a mental list. It takes time away from your family, takes time away from the jobs, but honestly, there's, there's, uh, there's no feeling like it. Our motivation and drive is the wish to spend our spare time doing something meaningful. The first time I came to Squamish, I knew that it was it was going to be my home, and I've been now in the Sea to Sky Corridor for over 20 years, and I've never looked back. It's an indescribable feeling. It's humbling, it's intimidating, but it's also exciting. When you land by plane in Tromsø, you land in the middle of the wilderness. You get directly into nature and the surroundings. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, uh, to do the best we can. I think it all comes down to staying calm and trusting yourself, being confident in, in what you've trained in over the last years, and being able to trust the people that you're with is imperative. We train after working hours and therefore prioritize short, but efficient and to-the-point scenarios. We have such a wide variety of training that every day is, is different to the other. The rope team will spend the day out on the cliffs practicing rigging anchors and raising and lowering a stretcher in the event that we get a stranded rock climber. And logistically, that's, that's a really complicated call. With the Norwegian People's Aid, I get the opportunity to help people in need on the mountain. I get a great sense of pride from being a volunteer. I can go home with a good feeling. I have been able to contribute to society. Squamish is a small community and it's nice to be able to, to give back to it, you know, in any way we can.